Welcome to Power Living by Ajay Almeida and welcome to September. September is going to be a month where we will be understanding how healing happens, what is trauma, what is adverse childhood experiences. Welcome to Power Living by Ajay Almeida. September is going to be a month where we will discover aspects of healing, especially healing and recovery from trauma. We will understand what is childhood trauma, childhood wounds, adverse childhood experiences, how to identify hidden trauma in us and how to release trauma. Today's episode, I would like to dedicate to the topic of understanding how people can begin the process of healing from trauma. Now, this is coming from an experience of dealing with clients who are in the recovery phase of trauma. So I've had the experience of dealing with people who have gone through adverse childhood experiences, also through teen trauma. And here are some of the signs, and I'll be specifically speaking about three signs in this episode, three signs of healing from trauma. What I see in people who are beginning the journey of healing from trauma. If you can identify these three signs, you are on the right journey. So let's begin. So the first thing that I see in people who are recovering from trauma is that they begin to get curious. They are now curious. Curious about what? Specifically, they are curious about their patterns. They are beginning to understand their habits and patterns and even coping mechanisms. They are more reflective and they now understand the why behind what they do. So one of the clients, just to give you a perspective, one of the clients that I'm working with realized that she has a pattern of immediately raising her voice when she disagrees with people. And she realized that this is a consistent pattern. Her work colleagues, her bosses have all given her the same feedback. And then she had this aha moment when she was arguing with her spouse and suddenly she had this aha moment where, wait a minute, I'm beginning to raise my voice again. And I'm realizing that this is happening because I'm beginning to disagree with a point over here. This itself is gold because this is when you begin the process of understanding that in the unconscious, there's something hidden in the unconscious, which is now coming up to the surface. And that is usually some of the consistent patterns that we run. The same client also came up with understanding of a maladaptive coping mechanism that she had. So she realized that once she's stressed about something, she begins to order food, junk food from the nearby outlets and just eat that. And she does that when she's alone. She does not do it when she has company. She usually does it when she's alone. She orders food online and then starts eating it. She also realized that she eats it real quick, sometimes not even chewing the food. This again was a great discovery. It was a maladaptive coping style, a coping mechanism that she had created to reduce the impact of stress in her life. Of course, it doesn't reduce stress. It just gives you the feeling that you have coped with it. But what it actually does is it just increases your stress. So the same client also realized what was her coping mechanism for dealing with stress. So once you begin to get curious as to why do I do this? Why am I consistently doing this? Why? Am I consistently having this pattern in my life? Or why do I immediately, once I face some situation which is unpleasant, why do I straight away go into another mode of behavior, which is usually the same all the time, maybe eating junk food all the time, or binge watching some TV series when you're stressed, or just not talking to your loved ones. These are all maladaptive coping mechanisms. The same goes for habits as well. If you take a look at some of the habits that you have, it's very simple. Find out all the times in your day where you are being unproductive and then see if you can see a pattern, a habit around that. One of the common habits I've seen today among people is 
finding for information on the the web series that it's their that's their favorite web series and finding online finding information about it watching videos regarding that so this has also become a habit and this habit is killing people's time so what are your habits what are some of the things that you do when you're unproductive consistently those are your negative habits and those will also give you those will also shed a light on what is it that you are traumatized about believe me the root cause of these patterns and coping mechanisms on these habits is a hidden trauma so people who are healing from it they begin to reflect on the why aspect that's the first step the second step that they usually take people who are recovering usually take is that they can hear unpleasant things about themselves calmly so once they have realized that there are some consistent patterns that are running in the back of their life they can also now listen to people not everyone but those who are really close to them they can identify the genuine friends or relatives or people that are around them co-workers and they can sit and have a conversation or even listen to things which are not so easy to listen to let me not break the chain let me go back to the same client i'm talking about and this is what she told me about a co-worker whom she found genuine who was not always agreeing with her but she felt that she can listen to this person and here's what she shared she told me ajay you know when i sit with this particular person and um, he just talks the truth about me and i just realized that that's exactly the kind of conversation i want to have i want to know what i'm not good at not because i want to push myself down but because i want to heal from it and this person gives genuine feedback so here's what she heard from him in fact he was the one who actually told her that you begin to raise your voice when you disagree and she was able to sit with this person and listen to him exactly and she told me that it was not so easy in the beginning but when she realized that she got this vibe that this person really means well for me that's when she actually silenced her judgments and her defenses she put down her defenses she didn't deflect she didn't try to defend herself and she just heard him out that's when she realized that yes this is a harsh reality about myself so the second sign is that people who are healing from trauma they begin to have difficult conversations and they become good listeners especially to things which are difficult to listen to about themselves if you want to begin healing then this is a core skill i want you to develop talk to people who really mean well to you go and listen to them and tell them tell me about some of the consistent negative patterns that you see in me in fact tell me about one pattern that you see in me and i would like to listen to you and when they are talking about it just stop defending or deflecting just listen so the third thing that i see people doing is they have this amazing capacity to have a hobby or a passion about something that gives them a joy that gives them pers- purpose perspective and joy in life the people who are enmeshed in trauma they do the opposite they don't have a hobby they don't have a life outside they just have work or they they just have an enmeshed relationship but they do not have a hobby you want to find out a person who's on a healing journey this person has a hobby or a passion so the moment you begin to step out of your head and you now are having a hobby or a passion you are actually living your life now why is this so important because i call this as a positive distraction this kind of a positive distraction is what builds your brain reserve your brain wants to be entertained in the right way what's the right way be meeting people going out in the sun having a hobby or having a pet that you can express your energy in now these are moments that will increase your serotonin levels it will increase what i call is a brain reserve your capacity to deal with stress will be increased because now you have an outlet a healthy outlet where you can create meaningful connections some of your hobbies may be reconnecting with yourself maybe painting some of your hobbies may be reconnecting with people around you 
probably public speaking storytelling i don't know anything that makes you sparkle brings a sparkle in your eyes have a hobby join a passion group a hobby group and see what makes you happy and start doing it so i have a simple rule of thumb in a day if you don't spend 15 minutes minimum 15 minutes on doing the things that are not academic are not related to your work or not related to your relationship but something just something that just energizes you and makes you healthy and happy then you're not really living your life so go ahead and see whether you are on the journey of transformation of healing from trauma do you have these three steps or are you taking these three steps in your life are you able to be curious about why am i doing what i'm doing especially about the dysfunctional things do you have the capacity to hear about difficult things from others from other genuine people and are you are you willing to develop a hobby or are you willing to go out move out of your comfort zone and develop a passion meet with people connect with people or do something that energizes you whether you're introvert or an extrovert that brings more joy and purpose in your life are you willing to do that and if you're doing all these three things then you're on the journey of healing let me know what you feel about this podcast what were your key takeaways share this with someone who will definitely benefit from this and help me to create a healthy a meaningful society around by healing from trauma actively healing from trauma this is your host ajay almeida from powered living go ahead and subscribe and follow and share this with others and see you in the next episode we will talk about four other steps that people take who are healing from trauma thank you for listening